Well, it's been a week of bad news on so many counts. There have been refugees detained at U.S. airports because they come from Muslim countries and the mass shooting fueled by hate in Quebec. So how have kids been dealing with all of this? Dr. Shimmy Kang is the medical director of Child and Youth Mental Health for Vancouver Coastal Health, and she's also a parenting author and a clinical associate professor at UBC. I'm so glad you were able to come in. Thank you. It is, it is something to be talking about right now. I, I hear from a lot of parents who are saying, not quite sure what kinds of conversations or how to open it up. What about at, at your house? What kinds of conversations are happening? Absolutely. Um, parents, friends, colleagues, uh, my patients, everyone's talking about the news. Uh, in my house, uh, I have two boys and, and a little girl, they're different ages, and so um, I want them to be kids um, and kind of go about their day, which is fabulous, but at the same time, you want them to be tuned in to what's happening in the world. Um, my sons are really curious about um, the, you know, the whole idea that uh, power and aggression and bullying, and I'm th they thought it wasn't supposed to work, but then you know, Donald Trump won, and now he's doing all these things, not collaboratively, but in executive orders, so we're having Having some of those conversations, it's it's interesting. Um, it feels, on one hand, it undermines a lot of parenting messages we're trying to give about collaboration, working together, kind and being kind and compassionate. But on the other hand, it's a good opportunity to talk about how the world um, works and what are the ups and downs and and what real life is all about. So all of it mixed together. Well, I think it's happening in in the home with with parents, but it's also happening in the classroom with teachers. So what is a good way to to approach those kinds of conversations? I think the first is to uh, really think about the age appropriateness of the disclosure of, of what might be happening in the news and the details provided. I always say let the child guide you. Um, depends on what they're curious about. They may want a lot of details and then if you're going to give those, then give them that are appropriate to their age group and understanding. If they don't want many details, they just want to know, oh, is everything okay in Canada? And then you say, yes, you know, we're okay. You know, this. Uh, event did happen over the weekend, um, you know, in Quebec, and um, the suspect was caught. And um, you know, there's no indication there's any safety issue here. They are always are looking for reassurance. Uh, I think that's important to put right out there, and find some positive aspect to any story that we're talking about in the news. Uh, and there is a lot of positive aspects: the coming together of communities, uh, free speech, uh, public engagement, people interested in social issues. So try to find that silver lining and bring that forth. Okay, interested in social issues, try to go out there, take a stand, that, that type of a thing. What if, what if the child is shy or, or introverted and maybe they disagree with what others are saying, there might be some, some teasing or somebody talking in the schoolyard. How can they, how can you give them, I guess, the confidence to, to stand up and, and say what they really think? Yes, yeah, so we want them to be assertive but calm. Um, sometimes we, we confuse assertiveness with aggression or disrespectful. You can be respectful and calm yet assertive. I give my kids a little um, technique, it's called the sandwich method. And really, if you want to give something meaty, like an assertive statement back, but you add it with um, bread on either side, meaning something positive. So you could, if it's their friend John, you say, John, you know, I really like you. You're my good friend. We've had a lot of fun together. I hope you don't mind me saying this, but what you just said um, was, I felt it was hurtful or mean to so-and-so. Um, it really bothered me. And then you end again with something positive, and I'm glad we're talking about it. I hope we can stay friends. That little technique or those types of tools, practice practice them in your house, um, have them role play before they go out there. All those things can really help those shy kids. Well, you think about what's been in the news lately, that the political re rhetoric uh, since Trump was was brought in as president, uh, the refugee crisis and now the, the refugee ban. Um, what about if kids are starting to get really anxious, if they're showing signs of uh, having nightmares, real signs of anxiety. How do you approach that? Do, do you just turn it all off? That's a real issue um, of anxiety. We know in general trends of anxiety are 
were rising before all this political news, um, and I certainly feel it in my practice as well. Um, shutting it all off is a great idea sometimes, um, taking a break from it, doing those daily self-care things that are so important, getting outside, going for a walk, making sure they're sleeping enough, making sure the family has time to bond. But you don't want to shut it out completely because it is really in the air wherever you go. Mm -hmm. So regularly checking in to see, hey, do you have any questions? Is there anything you're worried about? What's on your mind? Um, just in a very open-ended way and if they're fine then that's a great time not to bring it up uh, but so it's a combination of checking in and checking out and how do you stay optimistic through that process because you don't want to let on that, that you might be worried too it's okay to be worried um, I think it's natural and from worry and anxiety often comes action and we've seen that and we're seeing that and I think that is something to really focus on and be optimistic about. There's never um, anything wrong with conversations and the conversations are, are everywhere. So that is an optimistic way. I often say looking back at history, we are at a much better time than we have been in the past. Um, in general, there's less racism, there's less bigotry, there's less starvation, there's less war and violence. And so that's a good reminder as well. Very good advice. All the best to you. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you.